Hey guys, Stealth here. Time to review an East Germany deck. It was sent in by 62, and he wants to know how he can improve upon this deck. What I would change, uh, whether East Germany is an option for me, and uh, whether I would play with this one, and what playstyle I'd prefer. Now the first thing you need to know about East Germany is that it's a country that is geared heavily towards infantry warfare in this game. It has some very, very good infantry. Um, its tanks are not terrible. They have some very nice ones, but they don't have any super heavies, and that is going to be noticed by the opponents. Um, stuff like a Leopard 2A5 is not something you can counter head-on with another tank. So that is something that you really have to keep in mind once you start using East Germany. You will excel in urban warfare, you will excel in um, open terrain warfare with ATGMs, because they also got some very nice planes and some very good helicopters. But otherwise, try not to engage in a one-on-one -on -one tank battle, because you're not going to win that. Now, with that, it's a deck that's set up as a general deck. It's supposed to be able to do everything. Um, it is not a deck that is to be used in any specific gameplay, whether it's a 2v2, 10v10, etc. So, let's have a look. Um, he has... whoops. That was my bad. He has seven um, command vehicles. Should be enough. You might be able to switch this up to a BMP2 that has at least a bit of armor and still have five of them. You will, however, pay me uh, four point, 40 points more than you would for the standard CV. So it's really up to you. I think, though, that the uh, BMP2K is slightly better because it has that extra armor, both on the front and the side, which means it's more likely to survive if it falls to artillery fire. So let's switch those around. Then he has a FOB, um, some transports of the T815 type. Now these are very, very quick for a truck this big. They carry as much supplies as a Chinook would, but they do it with 100 kph off-road speed. They also carry a lot of it, as I mentioned, 2400. Um, and these guys are really nice to resupply infantry that you have stuck in a town where, for example, one of those MI8 helicopters might not be able to go. So with this, um, I think he has a decent setup. You can use the MI8s to resupply far away points from your FOB, um, group them up in groups of two to make sure you can resupply one of these and still have some supplies to go so that these 815s don't have to go all the way back to the base. Now as I got this deck, um, he has 54 out of 60 points, so maybe he's just keeping a couple of points in reserve to make sure that um, he can adjust the deck to whatever he's going to be facing. Or he just didn't know what units to pick and he wants me to fill in the last couple ones. So I'm going to um, go with the ladder and I will be filling up these points as we go along. Now as I mentioned, <coughs> um, infantry is a very important section in this deck and as far as I see now he does not have a lot of it. He does have a lot of AA in the form of these Igla ones. Let's select AA infantry first. You can only get the Strela 2 which is not a very good AA unit. It only has 30% accuracy. Um, range is not that good against helicopters and against airplanes is not very likely to hit at all. Iglas though have a better range, better accuracy and are more likely to hit so he was right to go with a lot of these Iglo ones at the highest veterancy. He's bringing these in SPW 80s. Uh, pretty well armored for a wheeled vehicle with two front and two side armor. It's not really anything that I would change here. Um, helicopters will make these things very expensive very quickly, so just keeping them in the SPW-80 was well enough. Then, ATGM infantry. Um, he has the choice between the Concours and the Fagots. Concours are definitely better than the Fagots. The Fagots have um, less range, a little bit less accuracy, four points less armor penetration, and that is definitely something that you want on an ATGM. You want to have that bit of extra accuracy, a bit of extra armor penetration, and definitely the extra range. So I'll happily pay five points more to get ATGMs in here. Um, he has seven of these at the hardened veterancy, so they're going to be getting a little bit more accuracy from the veterancy, and that should be well enough to make sure that these things can hit about one in two, maybe one in three missiles. Then he has some light infantry. Um, these things are nice to ambush other units. Ambush convoys, um, appear on unexpected locations. And for that, it depends really on the type of, uh, the type of role that you have in mind for them. 
If you bring them in the SPW70, they're not going to be very mobile, or at least not as mobile as if they were in a helicopter. The difference is though that they will be a lot cheaper. They'll be paying 35 points for them, including the SPW70 transport, instead of 65 points, or even 75, where you get an MI24D. I think that this is going to be more or less the line infantry, but for line infantry they got a pretty bad AT weapon, so we're going to have to figure out something else. And the motor shoots in 90 are something that you will have to be relying on in this deck as well. Because these guys are the real armor penetration forces. The Concours with their 20 armor penetration are not going to go through super heavies, neither will the uh, light infantry with their 15 armor penetration. Motor shoots in 90 will. With the RPG-7 VR and 24 armor penetration, they're going to do a ton of damage. So what I would do here is pick one of these in a uh, transport that works best with the rest of your forces. Or use, uh, or pick one of these and have your the rest of your deck adjust itself to that. So if you want to have a fast and mobile force, and it appears that he wants to have that since all of these are SPWs, we can just pick a couple of these in the SPW-70 and have them in for 35 points. Or if you don't mind them being a little bit slower, like for example the BMP-1 SP-2, the 1C, the BMP-2 or the 2C, you can also bring in an ATGM and an autocannon and some armor. They will however have a 65 off-road speed instead of the 90 that you see on the SPW-70 and they'll be 5 points more expensive. But I think that, that is worth it because it does give you an autocannon and especially the ATGM on this transport is nice to have for 20 points. So let's go with uh, 14 of these as a for sort of filler up material for the infantry section. And then finally he has the LSTR 40s. Great unit, um, mix of vampire, high end AT tank weapon, or high end AT weapon, and a very good anti air weapon in the form of the Igla. They also carry an assault rifle which has a good accuracy even on the move. What I have found though is that the LSTRs are not that good at dealing with other infantry because they don't have a machine gun, that's why they have the IGLA. So be very careful as you send these guys up against other infantry. Um, what I have seen to be very effective is a motorized East Germany deck or a mechanized East Germany deck because you also get a little bit more veterancy as well as getting more of these infantry slots. And that's when you can bring infantry, like for example, uh, I think all the way down here, the Wach Regiment. And these guys um, have very, very good anti-infantry capacity with their submachine gun, their RPK, and their 15-man squad. Unfortunately though, our infantry section is filled up. So this is what we're going to have to go with. If you want to gear your infantry section a little bit more towards anti-infantry, um, throw out the concourse because they don't really add that much and either bring in um, the Wach Regiment You could bring in um, a car, no, not another card of LSTRs, but let's see, FGB 40s are also nice to have They are, um, I suppose you could say the cheaper variant of the LSTRs You can see that their anti-tank weapon is uh, inferior to that of the LSTR 40s and the FJB 40s also carry a lesser AA weapon in the form of the Strela, sorry, the Strela 3 instead of the Igla. Moving on to support, he has some artillery units. Um, these are very, very good howitzers. They have a great range, almost 30 kilometers, good dispersion, good rate of fire of 5. They're pretty quick to acquire their target. Decent amount of mobility and good amount of shells that they carry on the vehicle, so they don't have to keep them next to a fob. Keep in mind though that these things um, are expensive, 130 points. So if you use them, move them after they fire. If you don't, you're going to be facing a lot of these 130 point wrecks on your own lines. And that's not something you want to see. Next up, um, a load of AA. Really a high amount of them. He has these uh, Tungushkas. It's the slightly cheaper Tungushka. They are not as good as the 100 point Tungushkas that uh, USSR gets. And you can see that in the sense that they don't have that 3.3 kilometer missile range on the SAM. Um, it will hurt the unit a little bit, but you still have enough range to outrange any ATGM mounted on a helicopter. So you're pretty, uh, you're pretty safe against other helicopters. 
They are 85 point units. He went with four of these at Harden to further boost the accuracy on the main gun and the accuracy on the SAM. Just make sure you turn off this main auto cannon before sending it to the front line because these things, um, if you have them active, are going to be very nice 85 point targets for a steep plane. Then he has some Taurus as a nice all rounder AA unit. Um, I found these to be very nice units, but they're not excellent at anything. They're all rounders. And by that I mean that they have a good range against helicopters and airplanes, although the uh, range against helicopters, for example, is not as good as it could have been if it was a full-grown Tungushka. And the range against airplanes is not as good as if it were uh, a Cub M, for example. Or let's see if they have any other great AA. Um, probably not, though. That's something that this uh, deck is somewhat lacking in. This is the best range, 3850, but let's say a Cub M4, which is the upgraded version that some other countries do get. That's where you have a 4.5 kilometer range, but this still is nice enough to shoot at pretty much any aircraft that gets into range. Now since he has four of these tours, I don't think we need the Cub as well, because they don't do, um, or they don't really have the same mission profile as the tours. They're going to be a bit cheaper, almost by 50%. They only pay 45 points versus the Tor, which has an 80 point price tag. But I won't be using these because their accuracy is pretty low. Um, they are units you need to babysit in the sense that they only carry three missiles. They're not very fast. Their autonomy is pretty bad, so we're not going to go with the Cub. He does have another group of AA units, and these are also radar guided. There are nice support units for the Tungushka, and you have a lot more of these. You can get seven, or even ten if you choose to go for the trained variety. Now, because you don't get a lot of opportunity to have these things fired at airplanes, for example, and you want them to hit, um, going with seven of them at Hardened is something that 62 did, and it's something that I agree with, because you want to get that little bit of extra accuracy that you can get from Hardened versus the trained. Um, some other units that I do want in here, and they're not in here yet, is um, short-range artillery fire in the form of the Tuncha. These are mortars with a 7700 meter range, and they're especially important in an infantry-heavy deck, which is something that East Germany does, because they can deploy smoke screens. And those smoke screens will mean that your infantry can push up, uh, your tanks might be able to retreat behind your smoke screen, and you can just put down standard mortar fire on any hardened position. So definitely bringing seven of these in. Tank-wise, as I mentioned earlier, you don't get any super heavies, and that is something that you will be noticing on the battlefield. You cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a super heavy from another country, just because these things don't have the armor or the main gun to do it. The armor penetration on the sphere, the ATGM that these uh, KPZ T-72s carry, is well enough to go through the frontal armor of almost any tank. And since they are heat rounds, they will also always do some damage. Even if they're not penetrating, they will do one damage. The main gun is a good weapon. It has decent accuracy, um, great to or well medium to great armor penetration of 20, good rate of fire of 8, nice amount of frontal armor, and a good off-road speed. They are just um, not going to be able to stand up to a super heavy. And so long as you know that and you see one of those things appear, you know that you have to bring in some other units from your main deck. Like, for example, an ATGM sniper, uh, sniper like an ATGM plane. So we're going to have to make sure we got some of those, at least in the vehicle section or the air tab. Now, he went with both the KPZ T-72S1 and the T-72S. I'm not sure why you'd go with um, a variety of these, because they do almost the same thing. You can see that the um, S1 is 5 points cheaper, has the same amount of armor, has the same off-road speed, same autonomy, um, same strength of course, medium optics on both. The gun is exactly the same, and it seems that the only difference here for 5 points is the sphere. And I will happily pay 5 points more in order to get the sphere on the KPZ T72S. So what I'm going to do here is delete one of these and get another card of these in. So I'm going to delete these as well and then get two of them. And that should give me eight of those KPZ T72Ss. Um, I found that they work best in couples. So uh, team them up in groups of two and you're going to have a very capable anti-tank force. Especially since they're going to be firing off these spheres pretty fast. 
Then a medium tank, KPZ T72M1. Um, nice all-rounder. Master of none. Decent amount of frontal armor, 14. Good amount of armor penetration at 18. Accuracy could have been a bit better, but it's only an 80-point vehicle. And then he has the T55 as a sort of cheaper tank. They do carry the Bastion. They've got a medium rate of fire of 7 rounds a minute. At least it's better than the T62. Armor penetration of 15 is good enough, and if they don't get through the target with 20 or 15 armor penetration, you can always try it with the Bastion. 10 frontal armor will mean, though, that they are not very likely to survive many hits. So if you see something that is um, going to be doing, for example, 15 armor penetration, make sure you back these things away, because they're not going to stand up to that. I would not really consider an alternative to these. Um, the KPZ T55 base version, or the T55 um, AM1PB, it's the one without the Bastion, carries almost the same type of armament, a little bit less armor penetration though, a little bit less armor as well, 9 versus 10, and 5 on the side versus 4 on the base version, but I think that with 55 pointers you get a good tank in this one. Reconnaissance wise, uh, the Camp Schumer uh, sniper team deployed in an MI24A. I usually, if I get the choice, go with the MI24D anyway, because you might as well wait till you save up 10 more points and you get a much better uh, helicopter because it has the Yak B instead of the NSVTs. It has um, the Flyta versus the Falanga, which is also a better missile with 16 armor penetration versus 13 and a bit more accuracy. So instead, let's go with five veterans of those. These are the exceptional stealth recon team, so use them with their weapons off just as spotters so that, for example, the artillery, the um, SFLs or the, the Tunchas can engage whatever you're spotting. He also has some uh, reconnaissance vehicles with exceptional optics. That does mean you don't get a lot of them. So keep in mind that once these things are done, um, you're going to have to replace them and it's pretty pricey to replace them. There are 50 point reconnaissance units. I would recommend keeping their main gun turned off because they do have medium stealth. They're not that likely to get noticed in the first place. So just keep their main gun off. Um, try not to keep them too far out away from your main forces so that they are in cover from your main force because replacing these things is not something that you really want to do. He also has some special Aufklader. Um, these are a shock squad reconnaissance unit and you can use these in an offensive role as well. They got the PKM, not exactly the best of light machine guns, so try not to pit these guys up against infantry too much. But what I have found these things to be capable of is going behind enemy lines and trying to find high value targets like command vehicles, um, say expensive resupply choppers, artillery, AA units, stuff like that. They can all relatively easily kill with an RPG-7V. And especially if you combine these with a group of LSTRs or FJBs, depending on what you picked in the infantry section, you're going to have a capable uh, commando squad. And then he has one reconnaissance helicopter card. Again, exceptional optics. So exceptional optics is really the name of the game here. We got those on uh, this transport. We got them on the helicopter. Actually, it's not a transport. It's just a recon vehicle. And we got very good optics on the infantry. So he really likes his optics. And I think that's a good choice here. Um, 21 units is not that much, but it should be enough if you're more or less careful with these infantry units, with the recon. Vehicle-wise, he has the uh, Flampanzer, also known as the Napalm tank. Definitely something I would have in this deck, because you can really support your own infantry with it. And then he has some Concours. Unfortunately, they don't have a very high AT value. Their armor penetration is only 20, and that means they will not be doing a lot of damage to the super heavies if they are engaging those things in the front. If you can get a side shot, though, you can almost one shot a super heavy. Their ground range is 2625, it's base range for ATGMs, and their accuracy is 45%, so it's, well, it's well enough, but they're not that great units. So for anti-tank warfare, especially heavy anti-tank, and that's something we don't really have yet at long range, we're going to have to look into the helicopters or the air tab, and that's really going to be a priority. Let's see, we got heavy AT here on the MI-24P. 
You don't get that many missiles, though. You get 20, or you get four of them with 22 armor penetration and a decent amount of accuracy. He only has four of these in the deck, though, and um, the Mi-24P does have the Kokon, but again, 20 armor penetration, so it's not that high. So, if you have the choice of teaming up with a partner who has a higher AT deck, like an armored deck or uh, an airborne deck, make sure that you do, because you will be needing that armor penetration. It is not something that these helicopters or any of the other sections, except for the infantry, do very well. <coughs> The MI-24P, though, is a nice helicopter because it also has the Molnia AA missile. Good range, even a great range against aircraft at 3,150 meters. Carries four of them, and I have seen these things shoot down my aircraft. So be very careful if you're facing them, and if you're using them, don't be afraid to send them after aircraft. Because that is something that they were more or less designed to do, if I remember correctly. They have a high speed, so they can be maneuvered towards an aircraft intercept position and there fire off their Mondias. Be very careful as you're facing these because they are dangerous to your airplanes. The MI-24P is your more traditional gunship with um, 80 80mm rocket pods and a twin autocannon. Decent amount of armor on these helicopters as well, one front and one side. Just make sure that if you retreat them, um, you do so quickly because the back and the top of course are not armored so taking a missile to the back of the helicopter is not something that you really want to do because this part is unarmored now air we're really gonna need a tank sniper in here <coughs> and interestingly he has four cards but only four aircraft so the ones that we will be seeing here are very very high veterancy for example one elite MiG-29 913S they are fire and forgets, all of these Vimples. Um, exceptional air detection, 900 kph, 40% ECM and a 300 turn radius make this a very, very capable fighter. I would, however, pick two, because if you lose this one, you lose a very significant amount of your AA capacity, since these things have the longest AA range of anything we have in the deck, and the next best thing is the TOR or the SFL, more or less. So, definitely going with two of these. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong aircraft. Um, this is the one <coughs> going with two of these I trained. Then, one heavy bomber in the form of the MiG-25 RBF, packing eight 500kg bombs. It's a nice all-rounder. This thing can do damage to pretty much anything. It'll not do a ton of damage to tanks, but it will stun them and panic them, so it's nice to have. A seat plane, high veterancy. He went with one at veteran. Um, they got a great range of 4,900 meters, high amount of armor penetration to kill anything, and an accuracy of 60%. So the last aircraft that we sh uh, have in here is the tank sniper. And this is the Su-22 M4, carrying two um, semi-active. This is significant because the missile will ha or the plane will have to be in range until the missile hits. Um, a high-end AT sniper. 30 armor penetration, 50% accuracy. I would bring two though. If you lose one, you lost almost all of your high end armor penetration capability. And that's not something that I want to risk. So going with two of these at rookie and hoping that we're going to be able to upvet these quick enough. Now that means that we still have a couple of points to spend here. We got three activation points. So we can go either into uh, tanks, reconnaissance, or logistics. Logistics is not something we really need to look at. We've got a solid logistics setup here. Tanks um, might be useful, but I think recon here is the best option. Because if we can spot for either ourselves or allies, that will help the deck out the most. And what I would do here is pick a cheap reconnaissance unit, which doesn't have very good optics or good uh, exceptional optics, but good optics for say um, 15 to 20 points. This one though um, I wouldn't pick because it only has 45 kph off-road. This one is a decent off-road uh, reconnaissance unit. You can see that it has ve uh, good optics, nice off-road speed, but its autonomy is pretty bad and the machine gun that you have on it is not really significant because these things will be disabled anyway because it's a recon, you don't want it to fight, you want it to scout. So that leaves us with the UAZ, which has very good optics for only 25 points, or another uh, unit which is uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, um, I think. 
Yeah, so 10 kph faster, and it has some armor. It does also carry a gun, but they are slightly more expensive. What I want to do is have something that's really cheap, so instead I'm going to go with uh, the UAZ here. Because for 7, or for 25 points, you get 7 of them. Sorry, for 25 points, you get 1 of them, and you get an availability of 7. I shouldn't be mixing these up. And with that, you have a very cheap command unit, a recon unit, um, for, say, your flanks or for an early offensive, where you want to have a quick look at what the enemy has. Naval-wise, he went with uh, one Sovremeni, one Udaloy, two aircraft and a ball. Um, not really I would, something I would go with, because I usually go either all naval or all anti-ship. And this situation um, is just demanding for one of these ships to be taken down by the Blue 4 Harpoons or any other kind of anti-ship missile. The Udaloy is quite capable of defending itself. It has exceptional optics, it has a defensive main cannon, and it has the Kinzai um, defensive missile, but I would not rely solely on this ship to defend itself. So what I'm going to do is give it some escorts in the form of two cards of Jangyu 3s and a Muna to resupply the thing. Uh, this is going to take too long, so let's just pick Muna. With this, you have a couple of low veterancy Jangyus, but you can bring in a load of them. And the Jangyus are very capable frigates. Um, I believe that, yeah, they are classed as frigates. They have long range anti ship missiles. This is beyond any NATO range, I believe, or just inside NATO range, so you can fire those anti ship missiles safely. They are fired in batches of four because they're fired from the side of the ship, so make sure that these things are broadsiding, so having their flank towards the enemy as you're firing off these anti-ship missiles. Very good sea whiz, so get very capable of defending themselves. Great main gun and a defensive naval surface to air missile. Can be used both against airplanes, helicopters, and as a defensive anti-missile anti weapon. If you want to, um, you could also pick a couple of these at Hardened. It will limit your ships to four of the Jangyus instead of six. And I found that these things, even at Rookie, are very, very capable and will upvote themselves pretty quick. So that's the East Germany deck as I would be building it. Um, I won't be playing it because I am cutting down a little bit on the uh, deck gameplays, if you will. Because I found that it impacts my win rate. Now, you may not care that much about win rate, but I do like to get my win rate up a bit more. So I'm sticking to the same deck. But if you have a good replay with this deck, and you can find the deck code for this in the description down below, please send me the replay through the link that's also in the description. Now with that, um, 62, I hope you liked uh, what I did to your deck. Um, some adjustments here and there. I think you're going to go have to infantry heavy with this deck supported by some tanks and reconnaissance units as well as mortars and a bit of those SFL HB 2S19 uh, howitzers. If you do it like that, if you don't encounter too many heavy armors, so heavy, heavily armored vehicles, so an armored deck, um, you should be okay. If you do see that you're dealing, for example, with a 2v2, um, and you are facing off against an armored deck, make sure you lure the armor into you. So get them into range of the Concours, get them into range of the LSTRs and the Motorschützen. Try to get shots off with the SU-22M4, the anti-ship or the anti-tank plane. And uh, try to play to your advantages because you cannot face armor on its own field. Now with that, it's the end of the video, so I hope you liked watching it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, always subscribe to my channel and I'll keep the Wargame videos coming. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.